and welcome to your cricket podcast Turning Point. I am your host Rika Roy. We are in the middle of IPL season 14. The games have resumed after COVID break. One of the key aspects of sports today is how it's followed on the second screen and also in the world of fantasy sports when it comes to IPL, it's about fantasy cricket. Now, um talking about fantasy cricket, it has been a turning point because it has added a new dimension um to the coverage of IPL fan involvement it has taken fan involvement to the next level now how has fantasy gaming um taken on our lives um uh to talk about that we are joined by two experts from fantasy gully on the podcast today babashish nanda and kartik ayer thank you very much gentlemen for joining me um well to open the podcast let's talk about the interest fantasy cricket has generated year on year and how has the whole experience of IPL become even more interesting fans have become even more involved because of fantasy gaming kartik can you, can i start with you sure sure tata first of all thank you for having me on the show and uh, fantasy is something which has actually united people to watch the sport even more because it's not limited to only you watching your team play it's also about you earning some uh, money by investing small small pockets of money in uh, different different small leagues and then at the end of the day through different players performing and you are getting certain uh, returns for your investments that is how fantasy basically has got people united to be watching the game babashish let me ask you um you know when we talk about fantasy cricket there is a money there is a, a component of money involved there is uh, also a lot of skill involved in in playing fantasy gaming uh, how much of uh, you know making a fantasy team fantasy sport is about skills uh, rika we believe uh, i mean uh, fantasy gully predominantly believes that uh, this uh, fantasy cricket as a whole has to be uh, inclined towards a game of skill because this is a legit game with rules and conditions and just laws uh, some unsaid laws to be honest but having said that it is what it is of course there are chances of course there's some point of luck that is involved but if you have the skill only then you can get on the ground play the game and if you have the skill you get on your mobile phone or any form of screen and you you play fantasy cricket there are about 180 million uh, cricket fans uh, in india uh, and if you see 67 or even more than that they turn to some form of fantasy sports we're talking about 7 million people or more uh, in the industry and uh, if you look at uh, what uh, fantasygunny.com brings to the table here is a shared space of wisdom because everyone is trying to get better at it beat it uh, and uh, yeah so uh, we firmly believe that this is actually a game of skill where you need a little bit of uh, chance and luck to go your way uh, just as it does in cricket to be honest um kartik uh, you know we've spoken about the interest that fantasy uh, uh, fantasy sports has generated fantasy cricket has generated now to give us an idea uh, to our uninitiated uh, listeners what exactly is uh, fantasy uh, uh, gaming and how do you you know get on to it how do you play it and how do you ensure that you know beyond beginner's luck you have more returns so uh, basically so see when you follow a cricket match 9 out of 10 times you're supporting a particular team and more or less you're wanting that team to win but when you turn on to fantasy you've got around 22 players to choose from and based on those returns by those players so for instance if i select a few batsmen i select a few all rounders select a few bowlers so all the performances by all those bowlers in your particularly framed team would give you points and accordingly depending on what sort of contest you're entering it will give you your right uh, returns for your investments now you uh, you ask me like how would beginners be able to benefit from this and that is where fantasy gunny helps you out so there is a section called as contest in our fantasy gunny section wherein it allows you to judge yourself so there is a low risk 
uh, scheme, there is a medium risk scheme, there is a high risk scheme. Plus, there is an uh, advice given to you that if you play in this particular category, you can beat X amount of people, say 90% of people, 80% of people. And I would also suggest that if you are a beginner, go in with a low uh, investment scheme so that and invest in multiple areas so that uh, even if you have to incur a loss, it is not a big one. Now, Babashish, my next question would be, since you are giving advice, you've spoken about shared wisdom. Now, where do these people take the advice to? What are the platforms uh, they play on and the, you know, best platforms to play on? If you can give some advice to my listeners on that. The way we look at it uh, is that uh, the more the more you prepare for a particular game, the more you have more chances to win, basically. And that means that you got, as Karthik mentioned, you got to obviously tick all the boxes of preparations, understands your, understand your investment, understand your type of how much risk you want to take it, what is your style of gameplay, uh, obviously current form and everything. Once you have all that in, you then get to anywhere where you arrive at the right combination. So, uh, if you arrive at a platform like fantasygully.com, that advises you to give give the right combinations. Once you have that, then you go and play these contests. And while you're playing these contests, the equal amount of decision that you make that it's not about if you're picking a particular player or not. It is about if you're using that player in a right contest or not. And that is the myth also that we are trying to break, that people think that, oh, if I just have the right players, I'm going to win every time. And unfortunately, had that been the case, people have been winning. But that's not the case. There's a lot of people who play fantasy, but they win inconsistently. Uh, what uh, the the scale or the landscape right now really needs is consistency in terms of winnings and consistency in terms of their strategies. Also. Just like cricket, yeah. just like some cricket teams, Absolutely. they need consistencies, and it that is the key really to any sport. Now, Babashish, um, I I really need to ask you, what are the platforms they can uh, then go to with the with the kind of collective wisdom that you have, and once they get that wisdom, where can they go and uh, play these uh, games really well uh, there are uh, to be very honest uh, beast I mean fantasy gaming dates back to 2001 in India but uh, if you think about the growth of platforms right now that that is just incredible uh, in the last few years or so these platforms they've just multifolded and uh, right now there's just for every type of uh, contest that you want like I'm pretty sure that uh, there are certain platforms who are who are specifically who are very good in in giving out the grand league contest and if you want if you're one of those someone who who wants to say win just a big prize at once and that's all you care about uh, there are specific platforms for that then there are obviously platforms who, who aim at getting people not just for fantasy cricket, but for similar skill and chance based games. And, mm-hmm. and they constitute a universe of their own. And so you can go ahead and play other games there. And obviously, if you're good at fantasy cricket, you'll do well there too. Uh, so there are, there are so many options. It's about what suits your strategy the most, uh, what defines you the most, to be very honest. I think um, how much time does an average fantasy player spend on his sport strategizing and then, uh, you know, playing something like this? Oh, uh, it depends on what kind of a fantasy gamer are you? It's like, are you an avid one or are you a beginner? Because if you're a beginner, you will look to different types of research. You will you go to 10 websites. You try and get the stats like who is probably going to win today. Who's likelier to win today? I might take X number of players from that team, etc, etc. If you're an avid gamer, then automatically you would have an idea like this is my kind of strength that I like to have. This is my combination. So that time that you said, if I am a beginner, I'll spend around 30 to 60 minutes because I'm getting more and more information. But if I'm an avid gamer, 
uh, it's more or less 15 minutes before the toss and then 15 minutes after the toss wherein you get to know your playing 11s and once you know that as baba ji's mentioned it is more about the contest that you participate in so there are contests like small head to head ones low risk ones low amount ones and there are grand leagues wherein you can actually win 5 lakh 5 crore etc etc many people actually get tempted by that and straight away go into that grand league things and which is why many of the times they fall short so if you understand your limitations and your strengths uh, you would not be spending more time and you would not be incurring more losses either let me ask you uh, kartik what are the hottest trends now going in this ipl season who hmm. are the hottest fantasy players uh at this amount of time uh, i think many people are trending towards picking more of bowlers because in this second league of second stage of this uh, indian premier league we are not seeing batsmen firing consistently so it's more a uh, tilt towards the bowlers bowling all rounders and if you are picking up players or batsmen rather they come from your top bracket like like your openers so if it, it could be your faf duplessy ruturaj gaikwad because the likes of your middle order like abd villiers glen maxwell tyron pollard have all been quiet so the hottest trend right now is bowlers like trent bolt jaspreet bumra and the rest also to add to that uh, i would right. say that uh, there are certain trends that we have seen both uh, in both the skills and uh, as uh, as cricket analysts and fantasy analysts uh, we we try and study these trends and we try and see if they are actually improving uh, your top picks to be honest and a trend that kartik and i were observing uh, very recently was that uh, a particular kind of batsman who tend to take time and spend more time in the middle are getting the success and getting you the points and in terms of bowlers bowlers who bowl a lot straight so they they are the ones that you need to watch out for the spinners who who are wicket to wicket spinners the pacers who who bowling end to end varun chakravarti yeah varun uh, and that is the, that is the trend that you need to watch out for in in these kind of surfaces where there's not a lot happening but if you mm-hmm. can uh, be wicket to wicket it's great and even you know, another the, the, yes sorry, yes sorry, can't, can't, please yeah, go just on just build on the point that baba shish mentioned batsmen spending more time in the middle that's why your openers come into play so so far your ruturaj gaikwad and even your evan lewis for that for that instance or yashashwi jaiswal these guys are taking some time in the middle and then you get the fruits of those I'm really curious to know since you mentioned about openers what about Venkatesh Iyer his first <laughs> season and the way you know in the last two matches he's taken you know the the I I think the IPL universe by storm yeah and that's why I think Harsha Bhogle asked Oil Morgan where were you hiding Venkatesh Iyer for so long but the problem is every team is looking at a particular combination so till 2012 2013 gautam gambhir was there so kolkata did not have to worry about the opening combination after that chris lin and sunil narayan came so they said that they had the perfect opening combination but now since chris lin has departed to mumbai kolkata are struggling for an opening proper opening pair and uh, they struggled with gil and narayan and even tripathi to some extent suddenly they just banked on venkatesh ayer and it was just that pandora box opened and he just showcased his uh, showcased his skill set now the other thing i am um, really curious to know about is uh, you know mumbai um has incredible power in its core uh, mm-hmm. it has uh, players like surya kumar yadav it has players like kishan kishan with them not performing now do the fantasy factors for mumbai change do the fantasy players for mumbai change now and also you know hardik pandya not playing a key role in this ipl uh, if i can uh, answer your question with a question yeah. it's like how you invest in mutual funds so mm. if some mutual fund is not performing say for a particular period of time or even if you invest in shares if some stock is not performing for a particular period of time you give it a certain amount of time right similarly mm-hmm. go to uh, these kind of players because these are i won't call them legends but these are superstars so no, you can call them ipl legends you know, <laughs> okay, they have okay. <laughs> you know suresh raina he won't you won't call him an indian legend but he's an ipl legend yes, so yes. so you yes. bank 
you bank on time you kind of believe that yes they have not started this particular phase well hardik pandya has been going through a torrid form not only in the ipl but also for india and in, in sri lanka he was struggling same goes with ishan kishan but he banked on these players to deliver when it matters so when the key matches come like when mumbai have to win a certain amount of games to qualify for the playoffs that is when i expect these guys to step up and if you keep investing in these players uh, at some point of time you will get the returns abashish one player i would like to know at this point about is virat kohli where does he stand in the fantasy scheme of things well he's the king on the field of the field and in fantasy cricket too i would uh, ask people or advise people to leave him out on their own peril i understand that uh, i mean from the outside it looks like uh, he's in some sort of a doubt in terms of his role as a player as a t20 player but uh, a part of it is actually clear that he's very firm on being a t20 batsman and probably the best t20i batsman uh, in the world which is a scary thought for the other teams getting into the world cup to be honest so i i would advise people to if go ahead with virat kohli in the medium risk and high risk teams right now because he hasn't got a score yet but wait around this game this is a funny game it changes quickly it changes far too quickly for class players like virat kohli uh kartik uh, let's talk about two other players one is uh, your namesake uh, uh, in fact uh, kartik uh, tyagi mm-hmm. and the other is chris morris now uh you know conventional wisdom would probably pick chris morris uh, the most uh, expensive player from ipl auction but would you also pick kartik uh, uh, in your uh, in your as your fantasy player in your fantasy 11 um not at this juncture because it's it's pretty understandable that he won the game for Rajasthan on that particular night against Punjab he's a very good bowler he's showing less amount of nerves but when you're playing fantasy it's not how well you bowl it's is it is it chris morris over uh, then yes, kartik yes. tyagi yes okay yes. And, and in fact if i can explain further it's not right. just how well you bowl it's about how many wickets you pick and how many runs you score that's how you gain points in fantasy you might bowl uh, concede just 10 runs or 12 runs in four overs and go wicketless but a guy who picks up two wickets and even concedes at 30 40 runs will fetch you more points because of the value of wickets same goes for runs So at this juncture I would definitely go in for Chris Morris simply because he has the knack of picking wickets at the depth and also scoring some useful runs. The Babashish what about Chris Gale? Uh Punjab clearly has uh, you know no confidence in him as a fantasy player or someone who advises on fantasy do you have confidence in Chris Gale? I do Rika I'm one of uh, the greatest uh, cheerleaders for Chris Gale since the time I saw him back uh, wherever uh, having said that I think uh, Punjab has realized that the best way to uh, probably put Chris Gale is that keep him hungry keep him on the bench for a little while and then unleash him uh, he had his birthday the other day and I joined a Instagram live that he started the night of his birthday and to be very honest he was having a great time so even if he gets uh, out there to bat I'm pretty sure he'll bat with a free mind and the day Chris Gale plays and you want to pick him uh, you don't just pick him Chris Gale as a player if you pick him in your grand league team in your uh, high risk team to be very honest you give him uh, the extra crown of being a captain or vice captain he is that sort of a player if he bats for about 20 25 balls uh, he is going to win you the contest straight away uh, but uh, that's that's how i look at it that's how a lot of people will look at it but i would still suggest that that is what your medium risk and high risk strategy is where the core players you know there are four or five core players who are going to do well you will spread them across your five or six teams but then there are player like gale uh, if you if you keep them then give them the opportunity to maximize And, and no, second, and yes, Shah, yes, uh, yes, please. Considering that there are matches in Sharjah, which is probably the smallest of the three venues, and mm-hmm. Punjab select Gale, the pick Gale for Sharjah matches. I would recommend users to pick Gale in their teams because even a miss it here, especially mm-hmm. if you are Gale, would fly over the fence. Uh, now, Kartik uh, Babashish, before I uh, get on asking you about the uh, you know top picks of the season, uh, could you please tell my listeners as to how uh, these players are you know yard marked for certain 
number of points or certain value on the on the fantasy roster i think it is about uh, the the fantasy gully rating because this this is just uh, one of a kind this is very niche uh, in this space so for example i'll just give you an example of virat kohli because since we discussed him now virat kohli at this point of time uh, comes in with a fantasy gully rating of 8.1 what that suggests that probably he is a player that was rated 9 9.5 even 10 in a speak form but the list of uh, uh, low scores or whatever has put him down to a rating of 8.1 uh there is another factor that we do uh, value players with is their x factor which is again a very unique uh, set of uh, rating that you find on fantasygalley.com is that that tells you the ability of a player to absolutely go berserk and win you the point on on that day so the higher the x factor the higher the explosiveness of that player not necessarily the most uh, uh, accomplished and consistent player but the person who can actually turn it around so at this point of time if you look at it pat to plessy will have a much higher x factor than rutraj gaikwad rutraj gaikwad will have more average points he's the one who's going to consistently give you points but on the same day that duplessy bats for uh say about 30 balls 40 balls is going to maximize so yeah these these are probably the core three ways that we val- evaluate uh fantasy players to be honest Uh, now before we close out this podcast kartik can you tell us your uh, hot picks for the season we have roughly uh, 20 matches left in this season now uh, who will be your top picks so if i can go by the way we structure our team like wicket keeper batsman all rounders and bowlers so my wicket keeper for the season would be kl rahul simply because he is in tremendous form and he gets the maximum opportunity to bat in terms of batsman my first pick would be rohit sharma because he might have failed in the first in the last match but he is coming into some hot form then my next pick comes out to be evan lewis just watch out for him in this particular edition of the indian premier league and my third batsman uh, would be mayank agarwal because again he is in the very good company of kl rahul and in good some good form as well when i come down to all rounders uh my first all rounder would be dwayne bravo again tremendous form and my next all rounder would be a tough choice a tough pick between andre russell and chris morris and eventually when i come to bowlers first spin pick it will be varun chakravarty then in terms of pacers i would go in for uh, mustafizur rahman jasprit dumra and trent boult very very interesting picks they are babashish do you have anything to add I knew that he's going to uh, pick uh, those <laughs> bowlers for sure because that's the discussion we keep having. I'll probably change uh, a few batsmen around. I would love to have a few differential picks. I think we got to watch out for a little bit of Yashashri Jaiswal. I think he's going to rise and shine. Uh, the amount mm-hmm. of confidence that they have given him. Uh, I might look to bring in Virat Kohli, but uh, that's just how I look at it. Otherwise, I think the all-rounders I won't change. I might fit in Karen Pollard somewhere because I think he's hungry too. There are a lot of hungry players out there desperate to show their skills. If you my listener are interested to show your skills too as a 12th man or a woman, those were the tips for you. You can write to me on rika at ndtv.com with your suggestions. But for now, it's a wrap on turning point.